Hey guys, welcome back to Chris and Retro. Tonight's video, when you saw the thumbnail and you came in here, you're going to be like, oh man, that's a dated story. It is a little bit dated. It's, it was earlier in the year when everything final, finally ended, I guess, getting wrapped up. It was well over a year ago that things went down. Um, but I, th I thought it was notable because of um, recent video I did with the Conor McGregor, McGregor video. And I keep referring back to that because there was a lot of conversations around it. It's been by far and away my most viewed video. Um, and a lot of it has to do because of the subject matter. And what I noted noticed is because of the comments that were in there was a lot of different things I think were important because they were good data sets for what I think how society looks at things and perhaps how we look at things when we're living our life the way we are. And so this story, I feel like highlights a lot of the concerns I have and relative to the fact that there's nobody is exempt from the fall. I said that in the Connor video and it was, it was debated a little bit in chat that he would, that Connor was so protected because of his money and his people and his power and all this other stuff. And the, the, you know, organized crime figures he knows and is tied with and all this other crap going on. Um, that somehow he's going to exonerate himself from any impact of addiction. And I argued that's not the case because as a man, you still fall and it may not be now, but over time it might be, it could take him his whole life. And in the end he's lonely because while the machine that he created is still going, the stardom he once had will fade and his kids may not even be tied to him at some point. Who knows? I don't wish that on him at all, but I'm saying those things can happen to the most insulated of human beings. And I think this, this story illustrates it. I want to talk to, about, uh, a, I want to talk to you about a first round draft pick for the, the Las Vegas Raiders, um, 12th round in 2020. And uh, Henry Ruggs. Uh, speedster thought of as the fat, one of the fastest in the draft, probably one of the fastest in the NFL in his rookie year. He had less than five, a little less than 500 yards, two touchdowns, but he, there were average of 19 and a half yards. Um, that's, that's pretty impressive um, for his, for being a rookie. So here you've got a young, talented speedster of a wide receiver, which probably would put him in a specialty role for the rest of his career, as long as he is fast. And um, that's usually a pretty positive trajectory for a, a really fast receiver. They've got other, plenty of options for him as long as they're durable. I'm telling you all that is not talk about the NFL. It just means that the promise in this young man coming out of college was huge. You know, if, if I'm that person and I put on that jersey, um, I can't stand the Raiders, so I probably would feel less happy about it. But no, as a 20 some year old kid putting on an NFL jersey and being one that was highly touted, you probably feel like you pretty much have the world, um, you know, under control and that you are king of some things, at least. Then on top of it, add the fact that his net worth was six million dollars. So that's what you're dealing with is young 20s, barely 20 somethings. I think he's 22 or so. Um, it has all these accolades. And he's out having a good time. I mean, he's just doing what everybody does. You know, when you're in that environment, a lot of times you're partying and having a lot of fun. Um, I, I, when I, the story, the reason I'm sharing this story and I shared the Connor story and I've shared my own story is to just share with the fact that there really isn't a place that you can be that you're exempt from all things falling apart in a moment. And I think this story illustrates that pretty profoundly. So in November of 2021, uh, Henry was at a party that was documented. There was video of him being at this party and he was having a good time. Everybody around him was having a good time. He has got the world, you know, by the cojones, so to speak. I mean, that they've got, he's got it. He's got it all. And um, so imagine being him. You've got six, you're worth $6 million. You don't see yourself as having any end to this, you know, based on how your career is. It's literally just getting started and there's so much hope and possibility for you. You're already performed well in your rookie year. So those big questions, could he make it in the NFL? It looks like he's had a pretty good start to being a specialized receiver in the NFL. You're out partying. You probably were the center of attention there, depending on what the party was, but you definitely were getting attention. You go in your Corvette and you're feeling great. And you got a car like that and you're feeling like you own the world. He already obviously thought that he was, he could risk, he could push the law because he was doing 156 miles an hour in his Corvette with a blood alcohol content of 0.16. He felt that his status at that immature age was probably going to exonerate him from any tickets or any problems. But he, that was because he had a known set of what the risks were. And I've talked about on the show before, if, if you knew all the risks, you likely wouldn't have entered into behavior. I talked about the, about the gentleman who had a DWI that was beaten to death in his cell. He, and his first drink, I don't think he would have proceeded and gotten a vehicle if he knew that was what the outcome was going to be. This person, I'm sure, would not have wanted this outcome. So at 156 miles an hour, he was driving in Las Vegas, 
and ran into the back of a Toyota RAV4. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's just a small SUV type vehicle with a young woman in it named Tina Tintor and her dog. Her car was her Toyota RAV4 on impact of a Corvette going 156 miles an hour in the back end. She was hit in the rear end. The car was propelled 571 feet down the road and burst into flames. And their account, she was not killed instantly. She was burned to death in the car and had to feel much of it. NFL first round draft pick, everything going well, 156 miles an hour, feeling great, having a good time, and on impact, his life changed. He walked away. I mean, he had some injuries. He was in a wheelchair in his, in his first hearing, um, but he walked away. Imagine being Tina in your, her car, driving down the road. I don't know what she was thinking. She had her dog. There was no account that she was drinking or anything like that. She was out driving her car. Perhaps she was seeing friends. Maybe she was just out for a drive with the dog. Who knows? Driving a normal speed. Imagine the pace. You would never even see it coming. If you're driving even 55, 60 miles an hour, if a car going 156 miles an hour runs into the back of you, you never saw it coming, especially not at night. She's dead, burned to death. I, I I emphasize this because when he was at the party, I'm sure he wouldn't have thrown his NFL career away, killed another human being. I, don't, I can't imagine there's a scenario where he would have gone out and done the same things again if he'd know if he counted the cost and realized that in high risk living, it is the total collapse is closer than it seems. And that's what I've been saying all along. So with that, I'm going to share with you guys um, a video, and I'll probably not comment too much through it, but this is from the scene. And this is impactful to me, because imagine the reality of the people here, and not the news story that goes around it. You know, wide receiver, Henry Ruggs, you know, the, forget that. Imagine being at the scene. Imagine being Henry, out of his car. There's a picture of him with TMZ holding his head and somebody trying to console him. He's injured clearly badly, but he's sitting in the street seeing this because he's behind the vehicle, seeing this vehicle in flames in the road. Imagine what he's feeling. Imagine being in the car burning at no fault of your own. I'll pick this up. So the car on fire. Got the 49 arriving. We got a block the intersection. The car right there you're seeing along the wall is just for about. Anyone inside the vehicle? I don't know. I don't. Okay. I don't. I can't hear it. Tina and her dog are in the middle of flames. I'm sorry if this graphic content is confusing. I probably should have put something up front. Control 449. The vehicle is completely on fire. We cannot tell. <laughs> Hey, who was in this vehicle? So, having been in a DWI situation, um, I can tell you, you when you realize that my last one, I, I was in a car accident. I barrel rolled my car. And I, at some point, I'm going to do a video about that because... Um, I've got a lot of shame and guilt around that, but that's not really what this video is about. I want, what's going through your head when that when you do this is you un, you definitely understand there's no coming back. I promise you, Henry understood in that moment there's no coming back, and this is not a sympathy video for Henry. And at the get, get the end here, um, I'm a little bothered by how this all played out. So, um, but I'm not a little bothered. I'm just <laughs> being a little cynical. Um, but this star receiver, his whole world became exactly as mine. His whole world became exactly as, you know, somebody who um, at the time I was, you know, just getting back on my feet finally when I actually did commit my last felony. Um, you can't, uh, there, there's no exemption for no matter what your status is in life from that feeling of understanding that there's no turning back and there's no getting out of this. Your whole life just changed and you're alive to watch it. And the families of this young lady will now have to go to her funeral and not have an, a body to even um, even have there. 
I'm not at this time, completely on fire. Every week that they're even willing to be put out the fire. I will survive for it. Please immerse yourself in the scene for a minute and just consider if you were the Corvette or how you feel about this. If you're living high risk living right now and drinking and driving is something that you're choosing, let's just talk about drinking and driving for a minute. If you're taking those risks, do not. Don't. If you can learn anything from my story, please learn that one. And if, you, if you're if you curious about more of that, we can have a conversation on the side if you need to. But there, um, I'm sure he felt fine. He was 0.16, which is double the legal limit here in New York. Hey, let me. This if you've, um, game. If you've ever been in a situation where you were, um, you're not ready for it. If you were, where you've been in an arrest or you've not been arrested, uh, there's a. It's it's not a quick event. <laughs> There's a lot of. Let me do something. I don't know if someone's gonna be there. Uh, yeah. Okay. What I need to. Yeah. What I need now. They need medical. I think even when you when you look at these types of scenes, and if you're if you're living a life that's going to take you here and you're not used to it, trust me that what you see on TV with it or what you think you know about being arrested and processed and all that stuff, you don't know anything about it. Um, that. This is just the beginning of it, this part. There's so much of your life that you feel like you're just wasting and looking at, you know, blank walls. Right here. Uh, let me get tape. Fucking block this intersection real quick. Yeah. Hey, we got medical coming up. By long, she's long shot. She's gone. Okay. He needs medical, right? He's right there in the road. Hold on. How much time you over there? I want to stop there. I don't care if you're a billionaire, millionaire, <laughs> the most famous person in the world. If you're Conor McGregor and you're out doing this stuff and you were the one driving that car, things change for you too. I'll stop sharing. Um, now, when I get the thing that um, I'm frustrated about is when this is all said and done. Um, Again, he was point. They determined he was a point one six. They were trying to just eliminate his um, blood alcohol level from the proceedings at all, which I thought was baffling. And it's it's lawyer stunts. I mean, he probably had a lot of money, and the Raiders had a lot of money in behind him to try to get him out of a mess. So he had high powered lawyers behind him, and they still didn't get off on it. I have a problem with what he actually did get, and so this gentleman for killing another individual carelessly um, got three to ten years in prison. That was the final dispensation of his sentence because of what he, the deal he made and the evidence that they could introduce based on any number of situations related to his medical treatment. And I'm not sure why that would be a problem with blood work, but they had some kind of an issue that made it so it wasn't as um, bad. And um, so he got three to 10 years for taking another life. Probably will get out in three if he behaves himself, who knows, depending on where he's at, if he can and what his mindset's at. So I guess the question is this. So when, when we're having these conversations and, and I brought the, the, the Connor thing was important because I think there's a lot of thought that he would be exempt from anything. So let's just say that three to 10 years is a slap on the wrist. I personally think it is for that type of behavior. But let's say three to 10 years was there because he had no priors and he was a good person, so to speak. And he just got caught up in a night and had a terrible thing happen. And so they're deciding that, yes, you'll lose your NFL career, but you know, you can go back out and have a chance to be with your family at least at some point on the other side, whatever reasons were that they went into making those decisions they did. For Henry Ruggs, he'll forever be different. He'll forever be changed because everything that he probably was working for his whole life 
is gone. It doesn't matter that he's going to have freedom again. And it doesn't really matter that he might be able to show up as an aging athlete on a practice field somewhere that's much slower than he was in his 20s. And he was especially a receiver in the first place. So he's probably not that big. So he's going to have to reinvent himself on some B league somewhere. And his whole life has been working for these goals. And it was, and he took a chance and he rolled the dice for a party. And he got in a car and he got a rush in the car again and killed somebody and ended everything for everybody involved. There's families at home right now of Tina and, and my condolences to that family. They are mourning her probably very much today. Now, I don't know if there's any civil lawsuits or anything outside that I would presume there are. Um, I don't know. Um, I didn't research it that far. It was more about the principle. The fact is, is that there is no insulation around you, no matter how powerful you are. No matter if you are a star wide receiver that the, that an organization like the Las Vegas Raiders put all their eggs in with the first round draft pick, the most valuable pick they have in 2020 was him. They invested so much into this young man and none of that was going to insulate him. Even an organization as powerful as an NFL football team could not save him from his decision to make a high risk choice that killed somebody and changed his life too. This is what I've been harping on guys. It's closer than it appears. It says it right here in the sign right behind me. I actually pointed right the first time. Um, the sign behind me, it's closer than it appears. And it is, we, we just don't see it. Our, our, the unintended consequences of our behavior are, can be very, can be grave. They can be grave. I hope you're seeing what I'm saying and I hope it saves you. It didn't save me. <laughs> I kept going until I got to, I mean, I, pro, I it, let's get real. It saved me to some extent. Um, it, things could have got a lot worse for me and I was able to turn it around, but it wasn't without a great cost and it wasn't without risk that could have exactly been what we're seeing here in this video. Guys, I appreciate you. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, come on back with your comments and um, thank you so much for the support of the channel. As you look at this video, if you want to go find the raw footage, actually, I'll, I'll try to put the link of this video in into um, the description so you can take a look at the full video. Look at it with no comments from me and imagine yourself in either role in that situation. And hopefully it'll make you pause if you can accept the reality of what's going on there. And then the next time that you're out partying or, or the next time you're going to roll the dice on something, at least project on the road of if I do this, then what? What could happen? And if you accept that risk and you're willing to put yourself in this situation, I can't help you. But if you see these types of situations as you're not exempt, then perhaps you'll start making wiser decisions that are not going to impact other people's lives with your poor choices. Appreciate you all very much. Um, until the next time we talk, please stay out of trouble.